Now, what's going on here, right? There's a, there's a pattern going on. And particularly, because I know something that maybe you haven't met yet, I have intentionally paired up this question and this question. And I've also paired up this question and this question. Uh, what's the relationship between part A and part B? We're all divided by minus one. Oh, one. Mm. Now, okay. Obviously, there's a connection here with, and you saw it when I did the synthetic division, right? Um, when you had dividing by this, what I did my synthetic division by was one. And then what I did in part B was I put one into the function itself. Okay? Now what you should see is there's numbers that you get which are in common. This negative 10, where does it appear in part A? It's the, it's the remainder over here, right? Now, coincidentally, um, I also got negative 10 here, which again appeared here. Do you see that? Okay. Now, why is it that those are the same? Is that a coincidence? Now, in mathematics, nothing is ever a coincidence, right? And what, what's wonderful about this is that you've got all of the mathematics that you need to see why this is not a coincidence, okay? We didn't do it. We've, we've done it many, many times before, but I deliberately avoided doing it. When you go through this division process, right, you've got a, let's, let's see if we can remember the terms. You've got a dividend, that's the thing being divided. You've got a divisor, that's the thing you're dividing by. What's this guy at the end? That's the quotient. There's a remainder. So you get four pieces, okay? Once you finish the question, you can take those four pieces and arrange them in this way, right? You can say, uh, here's your, um, what's it called? Here's your dividend, right? What it's equal to is, and I would like you to write this down with me as well, the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder, right? Which in this case is minus 10, okay? Now, part A, that division, told me that this is true, okay? That's what I get out of this. In the same way that if you do numer numerical division, right? Um, you can say, okay, some number is the divisor times the quotient plus whatever remainder is hanging on, okay? But now can you see, without actually really doing the substitution, we are gonna do it, but you don't need to. As soon as I've written it in this form, you know why I should end up with the remainder. Can you see it yet? Let, let me write it out, okay? If I put in one everywhere there's an x in this line, okay? The first thing I'm gonna do is look, there's a one minus one. Right there, do you, do you see that, right? Now, you know what one minus one is, it's yeah. zero. So guess what? I actually don't care what's on the next set of brackets, right? Because zero times anything, it's gonna give me zero, right? So this entire left-hand part here, it just collapses, it just evaporates away. And you're left with that remainder hanging on the end. Do you see that? Okay, so that's just the remainder, okay? And in exactly the same way, coming over here, right? The part C division told us that we could write P of X like this. P of X equals, uh, what do we divide by? X plus two times this divide, this quotient, sorry, X squared minus five X plus four, and this remainder. So sure enough, when you put in negative two, right, negative two, do you see, again, it's gonna make this zero. Do you notice that, right? So I don't care what's here. Zero times anything will be zero. And all you get left with is the remainder. Does that make sense? So what we've just shown here, right? That if I want to know the remainder, and this is really useful for me in about five minutes, if I want to know the remainder of something, I don't need to go through this whole process, right? I can go straight to here, right? I can just punch in a number and it'll tell me what the remainder is. And I don't need to do this like snaking path all the way through here and get the last number. I can go straight to the last number, okay? This is such an important result, it gets called a theorem. That's what happens in maths when results are reported. So I'm gonna give this a name, I need some space for this. I'm gonna leave that polynomial because I'm gonna use it again in a second. <coughs> This is called, because it's all about remainders, and originally it's called the remainder theorem. So, write this nice and bold. You can put a box around it in a second once we're done. The remainder theorem is, if you have a polynomial, P of X, right? Then, P of A, like A is some number, like, uh, like one, or negative two, or 100, or pi, or any number you like, okay? 
P of A is the remainder when you take that polynomial and you divide it by x minus A. Let me say that again. You take the polynomial, P, right? And when you divide it by x take away whatever that number was, okay? So you can see here in this example, P of 1 is the remainder when P of x gets divided by x minus 1. Or P of negative 2 is that number. That's the remainder when you divide by x plus 2 because it's x take away negative 2. Do you see that? That's why you get x plus 2. Okay? So this here is the remainder theorem. And what it lets you do is it lets you rapidly, without even dividing, lets you find out what the remainder is. Okay? Now, we did A, B, C, and D. I want to add on to that E and F, two very similar questions that will show us a special case of the remainder theorem. In fact, the most important case. Okay? 